This episode is phenomenal. And in this episode, we have on Mr. Randy Garn, and we talk about how to give first, how to really be the best version of yourself and the law of reciprocity and how you can start to live a blissfully balanced life on purpose and truly master the art of living. Do you want blissful balance in your personal and professional life? Great. What's up, guys? My name is Kerry Jack, and I want to help you. Happy hustle, a life you love, one full of passion, purpose, and positive impact. I'm a lifestyle entrepreneur, a professional model slash actor, a digital marketing specialist, a podcast host, author, a biohacker, an eco-warrior, a martial artist, a hippie cowboy, and a humanitarian. It is time to happy hustle your dream reality. All right, Mr. Randy Garn, welcome to the Happy Hustle Podcast, my brother. I am so excited to have you on the mic. Oh, man, Kerry, it's, I know we've been trying to get this put together. I'm so glad we finally did. We got, we got some snow up in the mountains now. It's, it's October. It's a beautiful time of year. I'm just I'm, I'm pumped to be with you today. Oh, I feel equally blessed. And truly, Randy, I look at you as the ultimate happy hustler. Okay. I mean, you are not only a New York Times bestselling author, a serial entrepreneur, an investor, a partner at the High Performance Institute, and just, you know, so many other things, but you're a family man, a man of faith, and someone who is prospering both personally and professionally. And I'm just so excited to dive in to Randy and the the man behind, you know, all the the pictures and the the glitz and glam online that you see but truly your character so i want to start with something you know that i always ask my guests and it is what is something interesting about yourself randy that not too many people know oh man you know it's crazy i actually have a bunch of interesting things about me which i <laughs> there i try to i try to squeeze the drop out of every single day i, I just out of, out of life but one of the things that that I love is that I actually was a was a bull rider in uh, in college, and we we, we rode some fun fun bulls for some, <laughs> and and that was actually one of the funnest things I've ever done. That actually drove more adrenaline than you know parachuting than I mean race car driving about anything I've done. That was the best. You're sitting on this massive bull, and they're snorting, going nuts, going crazy. And all of a sudden they pull the gate and you're just, I mean, it's eight seconds to just cheer and you never know what's going to happen. It's, it's literally, it's the unknown that just uh, puts your adrenaline to a whole nother level. And you literally, when I did that, I got completely in the flow, which time slows down. And like that eight seconds seems like it's forever, but it, it, that, that's one of the fun things that, uh, that I have done and, and, uh, and love. That's so awesome. I mean, I have a bunch of buddies of mine who are bull riders in Montana. Uh, I've been on some steers, not legit bulls, but, you know, rode some buck and bronx and, you know, been bucked off plenty of times. But I got to say, I give tip of the hat to all the cowboys and cowgirls out there riding bulls. That is uh, next level. So super cool fun fact there. Now, Randy, we could go in so many different ways for this, you know, this podcast episode, but I do want to start with your book, Prosper, because I just think this sums up, you know, the mentality of prospering both personally and professionally. Talk to us about the genesis of that book and, you know, really what is the story behind you writing it? You know, well, it's really interesting because back when I first started my first company, you know, we had close to 900 employees and and uh, did some some really really fun things, and we we literally um, one of the things that was really important to us was doing what we say we are going to do. And so we helped a whole bunch of people become New York, New York Times best athletes. We helped a, a ton of people do that. And so one of the guys that we helped said, "Hey Randy, if you're helping us all do this, like why aren't you a New York Times bestseller?" And I said, "You know hmm. what? I'm going to be." And we're going to get it done. And I really thought about long and hard about what what I wanted to write about. And it was really about mastering the art of living, which is the mm -hmm. balance between money, happiness, and sustainability. And so that was one of the key things that we wanted to dive all of our research in, all of our studies. We, we surveyed thousands and thousands of students of ours. And uh, it was a really, really amazing thing that we come out, came out with. But it really was the balance between money, happiness, and sustainability. 
And uh, you know, you write about the happy hustle. It's like, if you don't love what you do, you can't do it over a long period of time. So it's not sustainable, you know? And so it, it was, uh, and, and if you're not making money, then it's just a hobby. And I could go all day long on our research. <laughs> It really, it really actually shaped me. I think writing that book and doing that is just like, what kind of a life do I want to live? You know, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. when I, when I'm six feet under, like, what have I done? What have I accomplished? Who have I blessed? Who have I changed? And so that was a, a key, key book of ours. Ah, I just love that. Mastering the art of living and balance is truly one of my favorite words, Randy. Balance to me equals happiness. And I know I was out of balance as a burned out tech entrepreneur. All I was doing was working. And I know, you know, there's seasons of life where, yes, you push a little harder than than others. But just in terms of, you know, your mentality when it comes to separating your day and prioritizing these different important areas, how do you do it? What does a, a balanced day in Randy Garn's life look like? You know, it's, it's interesting because I stay way super busy and I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to move over to another office because they're going to drill in here. So this is the, this is the <laughs> okay. art of balance. Right? So this, okay. is, this is it. Um, but yeah, I think, I think there's some, some really, really critical, important things that that uh, you need to do when you're thinking about that, when you're thinking about how you want to balance, how you want to balance everything you're doing in life. And so um, for me, let me tell you how I do it. I, I literally am so conscious every single day about, about everything that I do and very methodical about it and very um, intentional about every single minute on my calendar. And it is... It's important that you, I, I have a strict, strict habit. Like one of, one of my business partners, Brendan Bouchard, he wrote the book, High Performing mm. Habits. Yep. And I really have become a master and a student of that. And so it's about your productivity and, and doing it in a good way. But I look at every single day, I journal every single night, every night I journal and I write down what are the five most important things I must do today. And those are kind of immovable for me. And then at that night, again, I kind of reset and I'd be like, did I do what I say I was going to do for myself? And so that's a really, really important part. But every second of my day is blocked out from when I wake up at 530 to when I go to bed at 1030. And that's kind of my 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 thing is I, I have it dialed in. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like so many people just are responding and reacting to whatever life throws them rather than being proactive, rather than writing their own story. They're just reading it. And I think how Randy is going about it, just being very intentional with his day is why he's been able to soar to the heights that he has. So all the happy hustlers out there listening, you know, heed this advice, this, these words of wisdom from Randy and, and schedule your day, be very intentional. And I love that you journal at night. I also big fan of the high performance planner, you know, um, Brandon Burchard and your, your company's high performance institutes planner like that has been a great beacon of light because it does, it does force you to reflect both in the morning and the evening so that you can be intentional. Now, I do want to kind of get into, you mentioned money, and I think it's really important to make money doing the things that you enjoy doing and positively impacting others in the process. But it's not everything, but it is important, right? You know, money is, is, a, is a frequency, it's a tool. What would you say has allowed you to amass abundance in the way you have, if you could distill it into maybe three key principles? Well, I, I think it has, it actually has to do with your calendar as well. Um, mm. It's like one of the things that I do love about, you know, basically income is like, what are you going to do with it? And how many people's lives can you bless? Because I, I used to be like, you know, and I grew up in a, I grew up in a really humble environment and, and, you know, we didn't have, we had, we didn't have a lot of money, but we had everything, you know? And my dad was a high school football coach. My mom taught mm -hmm. English and debate and, and, uh, we had a cattle ranch. And so, but we didn't, I mean, I was so happy. I was pumped, you know? And so I think as far as like, when I started to go to college and I started to really meet people with real su substantial wealth, um, it was interesting because there's a lot of different camps in that. Like money isn't every, everything, 
but mm -hmm. the art of making money and enjoying what you do to gain that income is everything. And it is a blessing mm -hmm. to be able to write checks to charity. It is a blessing to have your own charity. It is a massive blessing. So I remember working with a guy once and he's like, do I have a goal that I want to do a million dollars in tithing this year? You know, mm. and I'd like, that's actually an interesting way to think about it. Yeah. Is, is you think about the money that you can make is what can you do with it? <clears throat> and then yeah. just ensure that it's aligned with drive, drives happiness and joy. So that's, mm. that's the key. That is the key. Make sure that it's aligned mm. with what you love to do. <clears throat> Ooh, so well said. And I really think, you know, your buddy, Tony Robbins says it best. The secret to living is giving, you know what I mean? Like that one, that one line has resonated with me for, for so many years. And I know I feel more fulfilled when I'm giving to others, when I am truly in service and, and you are a model of this at the highest level, because I know you really look to just giving as much to others as possible. Your dad said something to you when you were young that has resonated with you for years. Can you, can you go ahead and say that, uh, that very important quote that your dad mentioned and how you live by it? Yeah, and I have it in my, I have it in my, my, my private office. I have it in my home. But <clears throat> the one thing that my dad said is simply this. Do as much as you can for as many people as you can, as often as you can, and expect nothing in return. And that is the way that I've tried to live my life. And once that happens and it, and it hits and you really give, you've, you've give, you've gave, gave to give, you know, you just give to give. And you yeah. never know what's going to happen from that. But you really try to drive those valuable relationships and you, you give to them and you never know what it's going it, to. It also helps with happiness. The reason why is because if you don't have any expectations, then you can't get unhappy. Because mm. what happens if you give and then they don't give back or they don't say thank you or there's no reciprocity, then, then the expectations are just like, dude, what? I mean, what's going on? So if you truly learn to give to give, then you will have a happier heart. You'll have a more generous heart. You'll have actually a more opportunity to really be a true blessing in other people's lives because you understand the law of reciprocity. I'm telling you, it, it works. It works. It works. Carrie, it works so well. And it's just amazing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I so agree with you. And it's like just giving to give, not looking for you know, anything in return, those are oftentimes the most powerful interactions and, and good karma circulates when you do give and you do, you know, have that abundance mentality. Like I even look at fellow podcasters or entrepreneurs or anyone as, you know, the collaboration over competition mentality where, Hey, how can I support you? How can I help you? And always looking for that win-win partnerships. And I do want to get into you and relationships because you are probably the most connected man I know. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, everyone. And if you look at randyguard.com, go to his website, just look at some of the pictures. Randy knows he, he's built such valuable relationship capital with these powerful individuals because of that mentality, that mindset. So I'm just curious to, to hear your perspective on relationship capital and how you, how you actually incorporate that mindset to every interaction with a new individual? Well, there's a, there's a couple things is that one, you have to treat everybody the same, regardless of how wealthy they are or mm. what their occupation is. I'm, I'm just saying this is another key to, yeah. to a happy hustle. Is yeah. That you never know who the treasure map to the treasure is, right? Mm. You never know. I mean, even from listening on this podcast, maybe there's somebody carry that thing that tags me and you get a deal with Orbis and you know, all of a sudden you're on the cover of the, you know, Orbis, Orbis fly fishing magazine. I was just, yep. I'm just gonna say it, like, you never, you never know. But when you come never out know. here and go fly fishing with me and I introduce you to some people. So Heck yeah. for me, I think you never know who the treasure map to the treasure is, which you never know who's the Uber driver's brother is that maybe have something for you that could be beneficial and giving in your life. The other thing is, is that relationships, it's, it's really the best thing that we have is our name. It's so true. I know we talk about it a ton, mm -hmm. but how do people feel about you? I mean, do you do what you say you're going to do? It's your reputation is everything. 
And for me, mm. that's everything. At the end of the day, again, when I leave, I want them to be able to say Randy Garn was a great, honest man, and he did what he said he was going to do. Mm. But also, the thing is, never be boring and never be predictable. And that way, you'll always be memorable. <laughs> Dude, have a ton of fun. Have a ton of fun in life and do things that like put joy in your heart. So I always will just do random stuff for people. I you know I'm sending out a couple of fly rods today to some friends that, that, or I'm sent, do I do five handwritten notes every day. I probably sent out 30 plus books this week, you know? Wow. Just to people. Um, and so one of the things that's always important to remember are those three things. Like, you, you know, you never know who the treasure map to the Trevor, treasure is. And then you never know, you, you literally... Um, the other thing is never be boring and never be predictable. <laughs> yeah. And that people, people will always be and are more important than things. That's mm. the third one is Amen. Are always more important. That's, wow. that's what drives the most joy in our hearts. It's not your car. It's not your bank account. It's not everything else. It's the deep, meaningful, seated rela relationships that you have with others. And I honestly, I think that's why I'm so have so much happiness is that I have some amazing, amazing friends and I have some amazing, amazing people that make me better and want me to grow. And so I think those are, those are three things that are, that are part of that happy hustle, right? Oh yeah. I mean, I love that. The, you know, just treating others with respect and dignity and, and kindness, you know, that is, that is such a powerful takeaway for all the happy hustlers out there. Just like be nice, you know, like you never know who who you know this person is or who they know but that's not even why you should be nice you should be nice because that is just the way of the world you know we're all part of this amazing adventure together and i just think like i do my my damnedest to actually give a compliment to every single person i meet it, and it's authentic like oh nice nice classes those look great on you or, oh you know hey you've been working out you're looking you're looking lean like some guys who i don't know would be like what that's weird but you know i think that type of compliment mentality has really helped me be the love and light in as many interactions as possible and if you meet randy garn in person i'll tell you he is the love and light in the room and he is just shining bright and that's why he's memorable that's why he's not born that's why he has so such powerful relationships and such quality of life and why he's prospering both personally and professionally and i do want to kind of get into your professional life because you know and i know a bunch of entrepreneurs who have had success professionally but their personal life has tanked they're just miserable or their family doesn't love them or they're in a divorce or there's just you know all sorts of adversity what would you say has been the catalyst to keeping both of your personal life and you know professional life in prosperity um i think it's <clears throat> it really comes down to like the first habit of high performance is clarity you have mm -hmm. to have you have to have super super clarity and i always say you know if, if you don't have your own goals somebody else will use you for theirs and mm. you know if you're not building you know, if you're not building up your own empire and your own, you know, and it, you can do it with people and do it with teams. And I'm not saying everybody needs to be an entrepreneur either. You can be a really amazing entrepreneur, but as long as you're working with a, with a team of people that are all dedicated to each other, the worst thing and the worst thing to ever do in life is to work super hard uh, at something in the wrong direction of stuff you don't enjoy or that you don't love. And so I think for me in my professional, it's just like, I really, I really journal and I really wrote down who are the top 25 people that I want to spend the most time with. Mm. And then there's another circle, you know, there's a hundred people and then there's like everyone else, like in my phone, in my phone, I got, you know, got my, my beautiful wife on there. She's, Love probably, it. she's top of my property list. Yep. I have my 25 top favorite people and to be in that top 25 favorite, that's who I spend my most time with. Because mm. your your time is your most valuable asset that will also yes. generate your joy, your happiness, and your income. What are mm. you doing that's gonna drive income for you? What relationships mm. do you have? I don't, you know, and a lot of people say, man, don't ever work with your family or your friends. I, I don't even, I don't even, I totally disagree with that. I mm. only work with my best friends and I only work with my, the people that I love, like, and respect the most. Those are my partners because we know we're going to be integrous with each other. We know we're going to help each other out. We know we're going to give 100%. We're going to do our best, right? 
we're going to do our best yeah. with everything we can. Yeah. Oh, so, so well said. I mean, as um, you know, the, the quote goes, you are the sum of your six closest relationships, right? So you either round up or you round down. And, and I, I, I constantly look at that inner circle and, and who am I spending my time with and, and, you know, who do I want to add value to and continue to connect and collaborate and who maybe is losing, um, you know, their, their spot in my inner circle due to actions or inactions, right? That I think that's important too, to constantly reassess. Randy, I'd like to get a little personal with you if it's okay. Uh, I know you have a loving relationship with your wife. Could you maybe describe a time where it wasn't so loving and how you overcame that adversity with her? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think love is, is you know, really being fully committed to each other. That's mm. that's the biggest thing because it's not. I mean, we got six kids. We got a you know, two kids going to school and college now and. And, um, I mean, I, I think the, the hard, one of the toughest times was when I had a significant calling in our church. My wife's company was exploding and growing. Um, my company, we just won entrepreneur of the year for our company. And, and we were like two ships in the night. Like we literally, again, mm. remember where it comes down to time. Like yeah. you figure out if people will answer your phone or if, you know, whatever that may be, it's just like all of a sudden there was months where we hadn't really spent a lot of time together and mm. we were just going full blast at building, doing other things. And, and we weren't, uh, that relationship was strange just because we had so many other things going on and we weren't paying attention to ourselves. Mm. And I think that we had to take a deep breath and be like, all right, Hey, we, we've got to really focus on each other. And from them and on, we try to go on a date every month. We try to hang out all the time. We try to do a ton of fun stuff. We do a ton of fun stuff with our kids. So I mean, it's a, it's, it's, you have to focus on the most important relationships with time too. Yeah. So well said. I mean, that is, you know, something where when we're happy hustling in our, in our professional life with our businesses, sometimes that most important relationship can get a strain because we don't prioritize it. And I just think that's why I have the 10 alignments being a happy hustler and loving relationships is, you know, one of the most important but they're all equally important and need to be prioritized, you know, but focused on one at a time. So when you are with your significant other, be all there. Don't be on your phone. You know, that's where I find most people are actually dropping the ball is when they're at work, they're thinking about their family. And when they're with their family, they're thinking about work. So they're not doing either effectively, you know? Dude, a hundred percent. It is being, be there now, be focused there now. So mm, yeah. So important. Now, I do know you're a man of faith, Randy, and I'd like to just kind of ask you, have you always been a man of faith or did you find God at a dark time in your life? Could you walk us through that, that kind of journey? Guys, I want to take a few moments to tell you about my latest discovery. Now, I'll tell you, this is one of the hottest super nutrient packed products that I have found to boost my brain and overall well-being on the market. First of all, let me tell you a little bit about my experience. As soon as I tried this product, I became a super fan of it because I was just blown away with the immediate results. I felt more focused, my mind was clear, and I actually increased my mental performance. Not to mention, it just became a part of my go-to routine for boosting my productivity, increasing my immune support, and even glowing in healthier skin. Yes, I said it, I care about my skin quality. So this product was actually developed after long years of research by one of the most advanced brain chemists and formulators today. And you've probably heard of the superpowers of mushrooms and extracts and collagen. But I got to say, this is the combination of all of those power packed ingredients in one. It includes lion's mane, chaga, cordyceps, reishi, collagen, and Peruvian cacao. It's truly like magic in a jar. It's called Kala Genius. Okay. And I got to say, you can add it to your coffee, your water, you kind of mix it in your smoothies, whatever you want to do. It mixes up very similar to protein powder, except it tastes a lot better. I mean, it's got a chocolicious flavor and it's delicious and nutritious. And you get the hookup for watching and listening to the happy hustle. You can go to Newtopia, that's N-O-O-T-O-P-I-A dot com forward slash happy genius, H-A-P-P-Y-G-E-N-I-U-S and use code promo code happy 
10 during checkout to save 10%. And I gotta say the best part is you actually get a 365 day money back guarantee with this stuff. That means they actually care about you and they stand behind their products and they want you to love it or you get your money back. So check it out today. You can go to newtopia.com forward slash happy genius and get some college genius in your life and start to boost that brain and body and increase that skin glow fam all right y'all now let's get back to this episode all right you know one of my one of my most favorite things to talk about is about my faith because i actually think that 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 drives so much joy and happiness in my heart is i think it's such an underlying thing and i think we're having a huge awakening in our country right now in the world with every, everything going on, I, I've always, um, my dad was a great man of faith. My mom's even a greater woman of faith, but I've always known that I know two, two, two things that I know that two, th- two irrevocable truths that one, there is a God and two, I'm not him. <laughs> so that's <laughs> the two things I know. And, uh, that comes from my buddy, my buddy, Rudy Rudiger. He always yeah. shares that with me. And I think my, my faith is that's what gives me hope. That's what gives me, you know, I believe that after this life, we're going to do so much more. I believe that, you know, I'm a spiritual being having a worldly experience right now. Um, and so I, I think about legacy a little bit different than just after I leave here. Hmm. And so it's like that eternal progression is what I, I love. It's like, how am I going to be the best person that God created me to be? Mm. And how do I live up to the measure of my creation? Um, and so I think that that's, it's a huge part of my life. I, I remember when I was like 15 years old, I was out at the ranch. You know, we were out at the ranch. We have you know, 300 head of cows. We had, you know, close to 40 horses at one time. And I remember wow. I was like 15 years old and I'm listening to a Travis Tritt song. You know, I'm going to be somebody someday. One of my favorites, dude. And I have the most powerful, impactful, like impression that God was watching over me. And really I had, I literally just had the strong impression that I was going to do great things. And I was going to get out of sugar city. I was going to go do amazing things. And I still remember the feelings that I had just like, Hey, I'm here for you. And I'm watching over you. I also have a huge, humongous belief in angels. I think we all have angels watching over us. You know, there hasn't any Jack, there's never, there's never been one time Carrie, that I've asked somebody if they believe in angels that they said they don't. There's, I mean, whether what religion, race, whatever, like everyone that I've ever asked that question, do you you believe in angels? They all say yes. And why is that? Because they exist. Yeah. I mean, it it is. So (laughs) I've had some pretty, pretty special experience. I got ran over by a car three years ago and completely crushed and just, I mean, destroyed my bike got ran over by a, a pretty big car and not one thing happened to me. And like, I like, I know that I had either guardian angels watching over me or it was a miracle, you know? Yeah. So you oh, can live, wow. you can live life in a few ways as if nothing is a miracle or that everything is a miracle. And I choose yep. to live that as if everything is a miracle. Oh, I love that, man. I, I know <laughs> angels exist because, you know, I recently died, uh, almost died. <laughs> um, in April from this carbon monoxide poisoning. I don't know if you know or heard about it, but um, yeah, we had a, a leaky heater and my dog woke me up from the unconscious stupor and I gashed my head open and he saved my life. But I know it was more than just him. You know, it was God, angels, you know, the Holy Spirit, whatever, something. And, and it, it's, it's moments like that, that a put life in perspective of just how precious it is. Like when Randy got ran over by a car, you know, like these are moments that really put life in perspective, but then you also have to believe in a higher power, something bigger than yourself. And I just, you know, do you speak about high performance habits? Well, I just feel like this should be one of them, like have faith in, in something bigger than yourself. Could you go through the six high performance habits? I know this is like super powerful and I feel I would be remiss if we didn't share with the happy hustlers, the high performance habits. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the first one is, is just that like to seek clarity is the very first, yeah. the very first um, habit of high performers. And Brendan did this study over, you know, I mean, millions of dollars were spent and invested in the research of what are the six most high performing habits, not just habits, not low performing habits, but performing habits that actually drive more joy and more, you know, 
more excitement in our lives and and actually productivity. So the very, very first one is to raise necessity. Hmm. The second one is to generate energy. Hmm. And so it's like, what kind of energy do you show up with? I had a big business meeting this morning um, and we had a, a breakfast and they were talking about, you know, what makes a powerful leader? And one of them was like, hey, don't be arrogant. You know, mm. and you think about energy is it's like, dude, do you want to, when I call, do you pick up the phone? You know, what kind of when when you know I'm coming into town, you know, are you excited to see me? You know, that's those are the kind yep. of things. Is us, those are the kind of things like what kind of energy are you bringing to the world? Is it negative? You want to have positive, just amazing energy. And that's actually a habit. Get in the habit of yeah. being happy. Mm. So, so that's that's yeah. that's a big one. Another one is to, you know, is to raise necessity. And mm -hmm. that's a habit where it's more than just goal setting. It's just like, I'm going to accomplish this and I'm going to do this no matter what, no matter what mm. I'm going to get this done. And, and so once you, once you've raised that necessity, you will increase productivity. So mm -hmm. that's the fourth one is to increase your productivity and that will raise your income. Right. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. I think about, like you ask me, like, I don't watch sports. I don't watch TV. You know, I live and my wife's like, come to the movies. I have a hard time sitting through movies because you know why? It's because I'm living my own life. Mm. I am writing my own book. I'm writing my own story. Yep. Yep. I don't want to go. I mean, and I'm, I know that those are important, but that's just the way I choose. I don't, I'll go to sports games with people that I love, like, and respect, but I have a hard time sitting down and, and literally like watching the game and I'll go, yeah. I'll go enjoy it. <laughs> it's business and I'm, and having it, you know, so I think those are some of the things. How do you increase your productivity? And then mm -hmm. the next one is to, is to, uh, um, demonstrate, you know, to be influential is to develop mm -hmm. influence is yep. the fifth one. So again, influence is important. And I'm not talking about being an influencer, tons of followers or anything like that. It's mm -hmm. like, if you needed to gather like we had the governor of another state come out here and we raised one, you know, $1.3 million for him. And I don't, we had like 11 days to do it. And there's like, they tap my shoulder and say, Hey, can you help us do this? I'm like, let's go. You know, so, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's like, I mean, do you have the influence that you need really to make change and to, to make, make some really big and really big efforts towards that. So you've got to have influence to be a high performer. Cause if nobody will follow you, if nobody trusts you, the yep. worst thing that hurt your influence is trust, right? Yeah. So, so true. So it's, it's key. It's key. And then the last one is to demonstrate courage, you know, mm. to live without fear, to completely live without fear. I mean, like, I'm so clear on what I'm doing. I have so much energy towards it. I'm, I'm doing it more than it's just more than just a goal. I'm actually being productive. And that's, that's actually, you know, helping me be more fulfilled because I'm actually seeing an increase and I should not play in business anymore. And then mm. you're developing influence and then you're demonstrating massive, massive courage toward your life. Those are the six things that you must learn. Oh, I love those. I'm going to repeat them real quick, just for all the happy hustlers, just to make sure you got these. Seek clarity. Number one, number two, generate energy which I love that one because, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe, right? Three, raise necessity. Four, increase productivity. Five, develop influence. And six, demonstrate courage. Those are powerful. And I know Brendan has his book too. You can check it out um, if you want to go deeper, The High Performance Habits. Randy, I do want to ask you just in terms of like the landscape of... 2023 and what's to come i know you're big into you know like looking ahead and, and planning and being prepared and and I'm, I'm curious what what do you make of this economy what do you make of this ge you know geopolitical turmoil and and just what's to come for the happy hustlers well i actually think that if you're a happy hustler you're going to be all right hey amazing um, anytime we are going to be, you know, we go through different seasons. I mean, I'm looking outside right now and looks like we're going to get snow and, and, uh, some rain today down here in the, in the Valley. Um, I do think financially we're going to be in, we're kind of going into a, a winter. Um, yep. again, I mean, I've been through recessions and, 
I have some really, really fun guys that he said, you know, there's been a hundred recessions and a hundred recoveries, right? But the most important thing you need to understand is to keep your head straight. Mm -hmm. And that no matter what's happening out there, speculation, the news, everything else, is that just because the economy is struggling does not mean that you need to. In mm -hmm. fact, our biggest years of, of our business when before we sold it was during the 2008, 2009, 2010 season in the last kind of recession. And, yep. and because we actually had a product and something that was inspiring people and helping them to be more and helping them to, you know, increase their skill sets and their, and their trainings and everything. And so, so it all depends on, you know, you, you do have to be wise. You have to mm -hmm. make a plan. You have to make sure that you've got, you know, really good people around you. This is a really good time to find a great mentor or develop a board of advisors and to pay attention to things. Um, but I think if you, if you look at it, if you will stay, if you'll stay a happy hustler, if you'll learn the law of reciprocity, if you mm -hmm. find ways to help other people get what they need, then you will never be out of a job. Um, and so if you can be that type of a person that is always trying to serve and bless others, you will never go hungry ever. And so, uh, but I do think it's a time where you've got to be super, super wise with what you're investing in, what you're doing. So, yeah. So well said, happy hustlers go back and just heed that advice. That is gold right there, Randy. Randy, I do want to put you through a couple of my more traditional questions that I ask all my guests. Okay. We call them the happy hustle hacks. And then we will put you through the rapid fire round and wrap this interview up. First and foremost, I know health is a priority for you. You can't happy hustle or be a high performer if you don't have your health. So I'm curious, do you have a tip, a tool, a tactic, something you do that's a little bit unique, maybe that you can share in regards to health that we could deem a happy hustle hack? Yeah. Yeah. I, so I think, I mean, I'm actually, I'm actually resetting right now too. Like every year I do a triathlon and so I'll usually do the Idaho spud man every year. We'll do a couple, we'll do a couple of them, but it's, uh, it's, it's super fun. Um, you know, it was fun. We, we did it with a group of, I did the uh, Kona half Ironman a few years ago as well, um, with some friends, but I think I, I do that so that I can stay, so that I can be active. You know, I love mm -hmm. skiing. I love fishing. I work mm -hmm. out every single morning, you know, almost, I mean, I don't on Sundays, but six days out of week, I'll get up and I will move my body for an hour or more. You know, I've got, I've got some pretty, pretty awesome routines down. Cause dude, we got to hit the ski hills, right? We got to hike. Dude, we, I mean, if I can't take care of my family, if I can't keep up with my twin boys, yeah. like I'm not going to be that, that happy dad. I'm not yep. going to be a couch potato. So I yeah. love, love, love to stay active. And a lot of times the reason why I'm act active and, and healthy is actually even more so to like, make sure my wife's still in love with me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Just, she's amazing. And she's staying, <laughs> she's staying as healthy as she can. But, yeah. but I do think health, like even your gut health, even your mind, the better yeah. you be, the better of a warrior you're going to be, um, mm -hmm. the more active you are, you'll be able to protect your family. You'll be able to protect yourself in time of needs. So, yep. you know, I was a wrestler in high school and, and I wrestle with my boys every single night and we have, we have a ton of fun. I'm teaching them how to be scrappy and how to, yeah. how to be able to, to fight if they needed to, you know? And I, I'm a total, I'm a lover and a fighter. I'm both. Coach. Yeah. That's, that's how it is. Let's so, go. <laughs> so I think, I think for me, for me, health is a massive, massive priority, you know, and, and I'm, I'm getting a little older. I actually did have surgery. I popped my bicep off my arm, um, doing a mechanical bull riding in Jackson hole in, in July. <laughs> oh, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need, a, I need to start doing some more yoga and some more limber stuff. To keep <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah. But, but awesome. if you don't have your health, you don't have anything, you know, and yeah. I do think that that's, for me, that's a massive priority in my life. Ah, so well said, some gold there. And we're both, you know, avid outdoorsmen and you gotta, you gotta be physically and mentally fit yeah. and strong. And, you know, I, I consider myself a peaceful warrior, you know, the peaceful part of me, yeah. but also the warrior part of me very much, you know, two parts of all of us. And, and we have to sometimes tap into both and you gotta be yeah. taking care of that health. If you want to really become an ultimate happy hustler like Randy. All right, Randy, I want to ask you about money. I know we talked a little bit about it, but you have a happy hustle hack, like maybe something that you do to save or invest or spend wisely that, that you could share with the happy hustlers? 
Yeah, I, I think for me, I think some of the things that, that I like to do the most, one, I invest in myself more than anything. Um, you know, I, I, will, I will pay for coaching, I will pay for mentoring, I will pay for making myself the best person that I possibly ever possibly can. Yeah. And I think the other thing is that the other, the other rule that I like to do for myself is I will only invest in things that I totally am aligned with as well. One that mm. I understand, I'll invest in companies or people that I know that I can help. And yep. with my skill sets and my competencies and my, you know, some of the things I've been through, I can actually help them grow and be better. So I think that's, that's actually been a super, super big blessing to mine. I think when I have invested in stuff that I haven't known fully and kind of gave that to, to others, it hasn't worked out as well as if I would have just, you know, done it myself. So I think just be, oh, be wise. What more can I say? Right. You know, mm -hmm. when you do that, but I, I like, to, I love to invest in myself more than anything. And then I, then I do like to invest in stuff that I'm fully aligned with and that I love and understand. I love that. That's so powerful. Yeah. Being very aligned and making sure you're understanding what you're investing in. Now, I do want to ask you real quick, a happy hustle hack in regards to spirituality. Do you have something that you do specifically to tap into a higher power and to connect? I mean, anything that you could share uh, in this realm yeah. with happy hustlers? Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to. So here's my morning. So I wake up at 530. And I mean, I've got all this nailed out. I mean, I'm actually, I'll be happy to share it with you too as well, Carrie. Yeah. But I, I do scripture study for my first half an hour, wait for my mm. kind of pre-workout to kick in. But that's like, <laughs> that is like, I, I always, I always say my prayers in the morning and then I do scripture study and then I, then I'll write my, look at my journal again and make sure I'm on track and then I'll go hit the gym hard. Mm. But I, but I always, I've got into that habit um, to always try to put God first, mm -hmm. always. And I feel that as I do that, if I get out of that habit, I just feel like, you know, things are flying all over the place. I mean, one of my favorite scriptures is, you know, we're, we're just clay in the potter's hand. You yeah. know? And he, he's the potter, we are the clay. And so I just want to make sure that I'm doing God's will. I really yeah. do. I want to make sure that I'm staying in tune spiritually because if I can do that, then that's that's more important than money. That's that that's really what drives my joy. And then I know mm. that my day is set for the rest of the day. And um, yeah. do, I do believe if we put if we do put God first, like we'll have so many blessings that we, we won't even be able to contain it. Amen. So God I do first. that. Yeah. And then we say we say prayers. We say prayers with our kids every single day before yeah. they leave for school. We we yeah. say prayers at night before we go to bed. Yeah. And we, you know, and then Sundays are sacred to me. Uh, those are, you know, those are a day for my for family. And that's a day for me to also work for God. It's uh, yeah. it's not, it's, it's a day, it's a day of my rest, but it's a day of his work. So, oh. you know, we, we do some pretty fun things in, in serving and serving other people. So, so for me, spirituality is, is who I am. It's, it's a big part of who I am, Carrie. Oh, I love it. I, I pray every day, you know, and, and um, have really been leaning into God more and more. And I just I find so much joy with that relationship. And I'm, I'm just so grateful to heed some of that wisdom and some of your routine. I would love to dive into some of it even deeper. But I do want to ask you, Randy, the rapid fire round questions, and then we'll wrap this up. So this is where I just ask you random things that you answer, honestly, first things that comes to mind. Are you ready, Randy? Coach, let's go. All right. Favorite food. Hit me. Oh, man. Favorite food is probably a good filet mignon. It's my favorite Ooh. food. Good yeah. steak. Favorite favorite movie? Um, Probably Rudy. Movie Rudy. Yeah. Favorite book? Yeah. Um, The Alchemist. One of my favorite Ooh. books of all time. Favorite workout? Favorite workout is kind of like a good hit workout. Um, yeah, a good combination. I've got, I've got a good, uh, a good, a good hit workout and then, then hitting some cardio right after. I like it. What's your spirit animal? Oh man, my spirit, my spirit animal is probably a horse. Ooh, love it. Best business advice. Oh, best business advice is always put the P over the E squared. So always, always mm -hmm. only work with people where their principles and their priorities are, are above their ego and self-economic interests. So 
always work with those people to, that have principles. That's the most that important is, business advice I give. That is fire. Three things you're most grateful for, Randy. I am, I'm most, I literally am, I'm most grateful for God. I'm gross, most grateful that I know there is a God. <laughs> I'm most grateful too for my wife. And she is amazing. I asked my wife the other day, I was like, ask her, I was like, honey, do you believe in angels? <laughs> and she said, yes. And she, said, she says, yes, you see one every single day. It's me. Ah, I, like, yes. I love it. <laughs> so I'm super, super thankful for my wife. I, I really am. I'm super, super grateful for life and that I'm mm. given more than more than one chance and that I, for me, life is sacred. Every day is sacred. Every hour is sacred. And I just want to make the most out of every single day. Yeah. Love that. And if you had a billboard for the world to see with your last piece of content on it, Randy, what would that billboard read? Master the art of living. <sighs> Love it. Dang. Killed it. Randy Garn. I just want to take a moment to acknowledge you, brother. You are a happy hustler through and through. And I just am so grateful for you sharing your love, your light, your wisdom with myself and the happy hustlers. And just for being unapologetically you and giving to others and helping others prosper, both personally and professionally, man. I just so am so grateful for you and our connection and just looking forward to just adding value to you as much as I can. And just want to say thank you again. Well, man, Carrie, you're such a stud. And first time I met you and that we've met, I just, we're, we're kindred spirits, brother. That's for sure. Yeah. You're, you're yep. a great yep. man. And, and thank you. Thank you. Do you have maybe some links uh, where people, the happy hustlers can go to find out more about you and, and also where they can pick up a copy of Prosper, your book? Yeah, you can, you can actually literally just go to Randy, uh, Randy and uh, get everything there. Oh, Super so easy. well said. I love it. Do you have a final call to action before I ask you the last question for the happy hustlers? My call, my call to action would be this. Get a really, really, really good journal and make sure that you are writing down your top two. Here's my, here's my call to action to everybody. Get a journal, write down your five most important things that you must do every day. Mm -hmm. Number two, write down five, five names of people that you're going to reach out to that day and, and do some kind of active service for them. That's mm -hmm. those, those are the things that I want you to do. And then the last thing I want you to write down, how did you see the hand of God in your life? And, uh, and that day, and, uh, that'll help you just put some serious, massive joy in your heart. You'll live the law of reciprocity. You'll never be boring, never be predictable. And, uh, things will, things will all work out. I promise you. Love that. Final question, Randy, what does happy hustling mean to you? Happy hustling means to me is that I am anxiously engaged in a good work. I'm anxiously engaged in doing good. I'm anxiously engaged every single day. I'm not lazy. I'm not content. I'm not, you know, I'm making this world a better, better place and I'm hustling to do it to drive both my happiness and others. That's, that's what happy hustling is coach. Oh, mic drop. Randy Garn, y'all. Thanks for watching and listening. We are out. Peace and love, everyone.